of Romans. The last part of chapter 11, the last verse. Last two verses. Or who hath first given to him? And it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen. God is the very reason for our existence. Amen. Out of God, all things have come. He is their origin. Through God, all things exist. He is their sustainer. Unto God all things repair. He is their goal. All things. In the circle of eternity, past, present, and future, God is all. And to Him all the praise for salvation must go. All praise and glory to God. Yes. Forever and ever. Yeah. Every one of us are on God's timetable. Every one of us are in God's plan. Yes. Yeah. You're not left out. Even if you don't believe in Him. How about that one? Mm -hmm. Even if you don't, are not mindful of him, doesn't matter. You are on God's timetable. And I'd rather have God for me than against me. Yeah. I'd rather work with him. And against him. Because all things are because of him. And we're going to either go with him, be with him. We're going to enjoy his presence forevermore. What we're going to do with that. But it's all God's plan. It's all His plan. You're going to have or you're not going to have. You're either here or you ain't. <laughs> God has done wonderful things for us. The Apostle Paul writes the Romans, the book of Romans, and he stresses up to this point in his letter on the doctrinal message. He gives us the doctrine of grace and faith. But doctrine in itself is not... An end. We must put now to practical use. We must now not only believe, but be a doer of what we believe. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
So Paul is urging his readers, after giving us such wonderful scriptures as Romans 8, chapter 5, so on and so forth, he explains in such detail the great doctrine of grace and faith through Christ Jesus. And he comes to chapter 12 and he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Mercies of God meaning all the good things that God has given to us in Christ. All the good blessings that we have. All that you do as a Christian is because of that. Well, why are you why are you one of those oh you one of those Jesus people? You're one of those Christians. <laughs> why why am I that? Why why are you that? You are that because you have had an experience with God. You have been born again. You have been, as with as the old Pentecost to say, you have been touched. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what you are. You're one. You're one of them people that's been touched. Yeah. <laughs> You're touched. I'm glad I'm touched. So I, <clears throat> I live and believe and do the things that I do because of the mercies of God in my life. That's what it does to you. Yeah. If you've been touched by the mercies of God, that's what it does to you. Amen. Yes. It causes you to live a different way, act a different way, think a different way, yes. go a different way. But it's the good way. Amen. It's the right way. You know, not that any of us, uh, any of us are perfect in ourselves. But God's way is perfect. And so we follow on because we have been picked up, so to speak, and turned around and set on the right path. And if you're on that path, <laughs> if you're on that right path, you're going to act like the rest of us. You're going to act like somebody's been touched. You're not doing it because you think, well, I better do this. And I better do that. You do it because you've been touched. You do it because of the mercy of God and the goodness of God in your life. And you can't help but do those things because of that. You can't help but talk the way you talk or think like you do or act the way that you do because of the mercies of God. It just does something to you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. It's not just not just some decision you've made. 
When his mercy came and goodness came into your life, that made the decision for you. Therefore, I beseech you by the mercies of God. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. The word present here is the same word translated as yield in the sixth chapter of Romans. God wants the sacrifice of our life, not of our death. Amen. Yeah, right. It's a living sacrifice. In contrast with the Old Testament sacrifices when, uh, when they put, the, uh, put death on the altar. But since we know that we have died with Christ, we ought to present ourselves to Him. The Bible says that if we have been crucified with Christ, we are risen with Christ. So that we should not live unto ourselves, but unto Him who died for us and rose again. So that we now live unto God. Now we're not living... For the very thing, the very reason why Jesus died. They say, what do you mean? Why did Jesus die? He took away our sins, but why did he die? He died because he took our sins. The Bible says in Corinthians, Paul says that Jesus Christ became sin for us. He himself had no sin. But taking our sin, the sins of the whole world, he became sin. The greatest sinner of all time. Because he took all of our sins in his body. That's what killed him. The soul that sinned shall die. Jesus died because he took our sins. Amen. If he had never taken our sins at the cross, he would have never died. But sin kills. All right. If we by faith have died with him at the cross. Now he died in our place, but by faith his sacrifice was ours. His death was our death. To sin. If we are made alive then by his resurrection, we're not living for the very thing for which he died. If sin killed him, we're not living for sin. If we're alive to God, we are alive to righteousness. Not to sin. If Christ took my sins at the cross, then he gave me his righteousness. 
If he died and rose again, and by faith I am risen with him. The Bible says he is risen to never die again. He came the first time for sin. But the second time, he doesn't come for sin. For the cause of sin. He comes for another reason. That's it. Amen. The first reason was to take our sin. The second reason, how many knows what that one is? So if we have been made alive unto God through his resurrection, because he took our sins and, and took them away. If we are risen with Christ by faith, then we are risen to a new life. We are no longer living unto that which was before. We are now living unto a new life. We are now living in righteousness of Christ. Not our own. But his. Paul is saying, I beseech you therefore the, by the mercies of God that you will yield your bodies as a living sacrifice. Yield your members which are upon earth. That's what your body is. Your eyes, your ears, your mouth your feet, your hands, your whole being, your soul, your spirit, your heart. All that you are, he says, yield it to God. Holy and acceptable to God. Now that you are born again, now that you have had the mercies of God upon you, now that you have received the goodness of God through Christ, he urges them. Now use your members. Holy. Acceptable to God, which is, King James says, reasonable service. It could be translated spiritual service. That word service is a term used in the Greek that is referring to the priests who did service in the tabernacle. Or the temple. Reasonable service. He says you're a reasonable servant. Reasonable is spiritual. Reasonable is a good word because it means it's only reasonable. It has to do with your conscience. It has to do with what God has done for you. After all, if he's done this for me, it's only reasonable that I do this for him. It only makes sense that if God has delivered you out of sin and death and given you new life, that you yield yourself to him. That you serve him with your body, with your mind, with your heart, with your eyes, with your ears, with your mouth, with your feet. But what you do is, is spiritual. He says right here. Listen, listen to what he says. For be not conformed to this world. Be transformed 
By the renewing of your mind. How are we going to, how are we going to serve God? How are we going to do this spiritual service to God? How is it possible that we are able to yield ourselves to God? By being transformed. By the renewing of your mind. If we just go around all the time thinking like the world thinks, we're not going to be very busy for the Lord, are we? If we're filling our, if we're filling our minds and our hearts with the things of this world, we're not going to have room for the things of God. Amen. If we're constantly letting our minds dwell on this world, filling our minds with the things of this world, we're not going to, we're not going to be in a position spiritually we're not going to be ready spiritually to serve God. We're saved. Yeah, we're born again. Yeah. We have God's mercy and goodness. Yeah. But Paul is saying it's time to move on. I want you to move on with your lives. Don't yield yourselves to this world as you did before. Because now you have such great opportunity before you. Can you not see it? Can you not hear it? Can you not Taste it. Do you not know it? There's something inside me that when God saved me, that says, yes. Yeah. A new day has dawned. I see the light. A new way lies before me. Yeah. I'm going to get up. Yeah. And I'm going to go. I'm going to go for Jesus. Yes, amen. He wants to walk with me. Walk with me. That means if he wants to walk with me, he's going somewhere. There's a time to sit down, but when you're with Jesus, there's a whole lot of walking going on. And when the Lord saved us, he called us to do what? Follow him. Follow his example. Jesus told his disciples, you call me master and Lord. Very well. For so I am. If I then your master and Lord have washed your feet, you ought also to wash one another's feet. The servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than the one who sent him.
if you know these things. Happy are you if you do them. He said, I have set an example before you that you should do even as I have done to you. So Jesus, when he calls us, calls us to follow in his footsteps. Yeah. Be not conformed, he says, to the world around you. Yeah. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, the purpose of that If we are to renew our minds in the Word of God, if we are to take heed and listen to what He is telling us, what to do and how to do and when to do, then you will prove to yourself and the word prove there means to put to, to a test, to scrutinize, try it out, prove it. As you renew your mind, as you know the word, as you get your mind straight. You get your head straight. Get your head out of the sand and look around you. Get off of your stool or seat of do nothing. Be alert. Be aware. Open your eyes. Open your ears. Now that you are a new creature. You have a new life before you. And you have much to learn. And you have much to do. And what you do and what you learn and what you say is going to make a difference in your life. In the life of others. How many wants to make a difference in your life? Yes, sir. We want to make a difference. Or do we? Yeah. Are we satisfied to just sit and just get by and kind of just drift along? Or do we want to get up and move along? Does the goodness of God so move us? Has that touch of God in our lives so motivated us? So stirred us up? Sometimes we don't get stirred up until we go to church. It's a good thing to get stirred up at church. Amen? Amen. Every time we go to church, you need to get... Amen. Amen. That's wonderful because uh, the word of God should be such that even the child can receive it. It's good to be stirred up. It's the goodness of God. You know, when a mother eagle is teaching her baby chicks how to fly. You know what she does? You know, you know, you know what she does. She pulls out all the, all the props. <laughs> she takes all the comfort, the feathers, all the comfort out of the nest, yeah. the, the cushiony feathers. Yeah. Then she starts pulling the sticks out. 
And whatever else she's got to make that snap, starts pulling out from under their feet until they get down to the thorns and the and the and the knots and the and the you know the hard the hardness of the nest. And their feet are so tender they they, they can't. <laughs> what she's trying to do is get them out of the nest. She wants them to leave the nest and take off and learn how to fly. And finally, and finally they do. And that's what the Lord said. You man up with wings as eagles. So the Lord wants you to fly. He wants you to take off because you were born to fly. You were born to discover a whole new world. <laughs> Every single child of God was born to discover what God has for you in your life. Ooh, glory to God. I tell you what, living for God is an exciting thing. If you're not excited about the Lord in your life, if you have no enthusiasm whatsoever in your life for the Lord, then your life is humdrum. <laughs> you become a boring individual. <laughs> You become lifeless. <laughs> you don't have much of a light that's shining. You were not born for that. You were born to rise and shine. And give God the glory. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus said that's what he come to do, isn't it? I came to do the will of my Father. And there was nothing humdrum or boring about Jesus. When you come to do the will of God, your life begins to be full and overflowing with great satisfaction and great joy and great peace. Oh, you're going to run into problems and persecution and adversity. Yes, you will. But I would rather have adversity with the, 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 the great satisfaction in him than to sit the rest of my life without, uh, without adversity and be empty and poor and dissatisfied with life. You know, do you ever wake up, do you ever wake up and go through and say, I am so bored. Now, the older you get, sometimes you're satisfied just to do this, you know. And at the end of the day, you tell you, wow, didn't we have a great day today? <laughs> but no matter how young or how old you are, There is always, there's always that something that moves us. Even, even when sometimes I don't look like I'm being moved. Even sometimes when it looks like I'm not really very happy maybe. There's something stirring on the inside of me. Glory to God. 
You may not be able to jump as high as you used to. Or dance as good as you used to. Or move the way you used to. But boy, there's something. If you could just see on the inside of me and what's going on in there. Because we're tuned in. Brother Phil, we're tuned in. Yeah, glory to God. And you tune in, and sometimes that's what happens. You're sitting at home, and all of a sudden it comes out of you. Say, Woo, glory to God. You're tuned in. You're going down the highway in your car. Pretty soon you say, Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. And when you're talking with somebody about the Lord, you know, glory to God, something just starts coming out of you. Some start working in you, moving you, motivating you. And you say, well, I was able to do that after all. <laughs> I thought I was too old or too sick or too down or too out. But thanks be to God, I'm still able to do it. Amen. Because I am proving to myself. The will of God. Let's read it. <laughs> <laughs> that you may prove. To who? To yourself. That you will find out for your very own self. <laughs> Somebody said, why are you doing it, Brother Bob? Because I found out something from myself here. <laughs> why do you act like, why do you jump like that? Because I found out something. <laughs> That you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now there are some preachers that teach there's three wills of God based on that scripture. That is not the truth. Don't believe it. The will of God is the will of God. Amen. It is good in that we, when we may not perceive it to be so, it is unmistakably good. And when we perceive the will of God is good, It's acceptable to us. I can accept that, Lord. Because it is so good. It is so right. I can accept that. I am in agreement with you, God about this situation, about this, whatever it is. That's the way God is. Yeah. Everything about God is so good. Hallelujah. His way, His truth, His word, yes. His will is so good yes. that I can't agree. I, I agree with it. Now, the world's not going to agree with it. Amen. The world doesn't agree with God. 
It's gotten to the point where everything that is good, they call evil. And everything that is evil, they call good. But those that are born of God, those who have the mercy of God in their life, and the goodness of God, those that have tasted that God is good. Jesus one time was talking to his disciples and the people. I thank thee, Father, that thou hast not revealed these things unto the wise and the prudent. But rather, you have showed it unto babes. For so it seemed good in thy sight. So what God wants is always good. Amen. Yeah, glory to God. Yes. Sometimes we want to buck up against what God wants. But what God wants is the very best for you. It's good for you. Amen. Don't rebel. Aren't you saved? Haven't you known the mercy of God in your life? Why are you rebelling against God? Haven't you entered into the king's court and beheld his glory? Haven't you heard his sweet, tender voice in your heart? Haven't you felt the touch of the Master's hand in your life? Haven't you experienced the indwelling, the comforting, the infusion of the Holy Spirit? If you have then you know that whatever God wants is good. I'm not going to argue with God with what He wants. Good means it's fitted for you. It's right. Not just that it tastes good. But it's good for you. Yes. <laughs> Some of the best things in life that are good, that are best for you, don't taste so good, maybe. But it's good for you. Eat it. <laughs> it's good for you. Drink it. It's good for you. <laughs> But I don't want that. I don't want to go down there. I don't want to do that. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's not like me. I don't do those kind of things. You're born of God. Do it. Amen. You are not your own anymore. Do what God said to do. Amen. And when you put it to the test, When you try it, you will find that it is good. Yeah. And you will find it acceptable to you. When you perceive God's will as being good, you will accept it. And not only is it acceptable, It 
is perfect. Why is it perfect? Because it achieves that end that God has in mind. It achieves that end which God has in mind to do. It accomplishes that which He wants. Why does God want me to do this or do that? Why? Because He has something in mind. He wants to achieve something. And everything that God does and says achieves what He wants. Glory to God. You remember the scripture in the Old Testament that God said, I will send forth my word. And it will accomplish that which I intended to do. And it will not return unto me void. It will accomplish that which I intend for it to do. Now you take that scripture and put it with Jesus. He said, I will send my word. And my word will accomplish that which I sent it for. Sounds like Jesus. Yes. It will not return unto me void. Empty. Useless. What did Jesus do when He came? He came to do the will of the Father. And when He said, it is finished. And he rose again from the dead when he returned to the Father in heaven. Yeah. He did not return empty handed. But he accomplished that which he was sent for. So shall his word be. We find then that God's will. accomplishes in your life that which is needful for you. Don't question God's will. Yield yourselves and when your mind is being transformed your body is being geared right. You're thinking straight. It's no longer filled with the thoughts of the world, but with the thoughts of God, the thoughts of His Word. Hallelujah. You're getting all mixed in. You're part of the ingredients. It's getting, to, it's getting to where nobody can tell the difference between you and, he, and it. <laughs> they can't tell the difference between you and him. You're getting so stirred up and mixed together, the ingredients are becoming so much that you can't separate them. They're all mixed together. You ever watch your mama make a cake? Put the flour in the bowl and the baking powder and the soda and the salt and the sugar. And when it's all mixed together, you can't tell the difference between them. Man, they're just all, it's all together. That's what happens to us when we get all mixed in with Him. But that's not the end. Your mama didn't mix flour and sugar and salt for nothing. 
She didn't put it on a ball and stir it around so it ain't that pretty. Well, what are we supposed to do with it, mama? <laughs> but there's something in mind. It's good. It's acceptable. And when she puts that thing in the oven and brings it out, it's perfect. <laughs> And all the ingredients go in. She pours it in that pan. Hallelujah. That's what God is saying to us. Hallelujah. This little church here has a lot of ingredients. You are all part of the ingredients. Yes. God is mixing you all together. Yes. I'm glad I'm in the mix. <laughs> Lord, Woo! that is the Holy Spirit just told me. You're in the mix, son, and now guess what happens next? I'm going to stir you up. <laughs> ah, glory! Stir me up, Lord! Do with my life what you will. What is your purpose for my life, God? My purpose is to make a chocolate cake out of you, boy. <laughs> My purpose is to make the best ice cream you ever put in your mouth, boy. My purpose is to make the best cornbread you ever ate in your life, boy. Hallelujah. Lord, stir me up. Let me get lost in the mix. Hallelujah. So that I can know. I'm on my way. We're fixing to go into the oven. Glory to God. And when we come out the other side, glory to God. And guess what? Heaven is the icing on the cake. Stand with me, everybody. Yeah, we talk about food around here a lot. <laughs> I could go on with this message, but I'll stop right there. Some of us this morning are half done Christians. But God ain't through with you yet. Some of you, God's been mixing around for a while. But He ain't through with you yet. Keep stirring. Keep stirring. <laughs> I think I need a little milk in there, Lord. <laughs> Lord says, I'm like, how about a couple of eggs in there? Lord said, well, I'll give you a bunch of eggheads at the church. <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't, don't, tell you don't be mad at me. I didn't mean anything about <laughs> We all belong to that dozen. Amen. 
It's funny, Jesus chose 12 men. <laughs> he, he chose 12 men to mix in with him. But the thing is, when you get mixed with Jesus, nothing better than that. That's right. Amen. 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 You think your mama can make a cake? Look what God's doing. Amen. 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 That's right. That's that. Think grandma could bake a good apple pie? Or pecan pie. <laughs> Look what God is doing. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it gets better every day, don't it, Phil? Hallelujah. Every day. I proved myself how good and how, oh, how acceptable it is. It gets to the point where I say, Lord, it just ain't going to work without you. I've come, I just come to that conclusion in my life. It can only work with you, Lord. <laughs> People will fail you. They'll let you down. But he will never let you down. So I've come to that conclusion. I've learned that in my life. God, I need you. I can't do it without you. You're the, you're the ingredient we need. You, you, you. So I've learned to accept that. It's so acceptable with me. Nothing else will do. Because I know that the will of God is perfect. And if we wait upon Him, he will bring it to completion, to maturity. Yeah. Everything. Everything that you want in your life, He will bring it to maturity. Amen. Raise your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, everything that's in their heart and mind now, yeah. everything that concerns them, and I know there's our concerns, will come to maturity. Yeah. Completion. Jesus' name. Take somebody by the hand. Say in the name of Jesus. Everything about you as my brother and sister in Christ. Everything that concerns you will be completed. It will come to maturity. You are blessed of God. You're not going to live where you're not going to live in sin. You're going to live under God. You're not living for the world or yourself. You're living for the one who died for you. Hallelujah. And it's good. And it's acceptable. And it's perfect. Praise God. Living for Jesus is perfect. Oh my God, hallelujah. I feel drunk right now. And it's good stuff, man. Here, you want some? Glory to God. Woo! Woo! Did you ever feel drunk? Everything about God is so good. And if it's that good now, what's it going to be then? If we see God doing things here on this earth now and answering prayer and doing wonderful things for us, what is it going to be like then? Amen. So we conclude. It's 1201. So we conclude. 
that everything that God is doing for us here now, His will for us now, is to bring about His intended end for us. But it's not really an end, it's just the beginning. It'll be the end here and the beginning there. Everything God doing in your life right now, He's doing it for that reason. To strengthen you, to help you, to encourage you, to keep you, so that He may come and take you unto Himself. Amen. So quit complaining. <laughs> Bob, quit your murmuring and complaining. <laughs> quit grumbling. Look at the end. Look at what God is bringing you to. Amen. You'll have troubles, sure. You'll have, you'll have, you'll have <laughs> trials and hills and valleys and storms and everything else come your way. And I say, Lord, if I should die up on a foreign field someday for you, it would be no more than love demand. Yeah. No less could I repay. No greater love is a mortal man than for his friend to die. And then I heard him tenderly reply, if just one cup of water I place within your hand. Then just one cup of water is all that I demand. Be faithful, weary pilgrim. For the morning I can see. Just lift your cross. Lift your cross and follow close to me. Father, your will be done. I hear your voice. <laughs> I feel your presence, Lord. Your spirit bids us all. If any man would follow Christ, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow. You see our situation today in America? trouble that we're in, the problems that we incur. But you're greater than all of our problems. You're greater than all the mountains that I can or cannot see. You're bigger. Father, I feel your spirit your presence, God, is moving in our hearts right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're doing with us. And we find all that you do so good, so acceptable, so perfect, so wonderful. 
just even as your name is wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Lord, if there's anyone here this morning lost, you need Jesus. You can come to Him. All you got to do is just say, Lord, I believe. I believe you took all of my sins to crawl. I believe you died for me and rose again. I believe in my heart. I confess you with my mouth. You will be saved. If you are saved, say, Lord, I want to follow your will for my life. Let me speak as you want me to speak. Think as you would have me think. Live as you have me live. From this day forward, Lord, I, I would repent. I turn away from my selfishness to follow you. I want to draw closer to you, Lord. Everybody say, Lord, Lord, I want to draw closer to you. Draw me closer to you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Draw me nearer, nearer, precious Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. I am thine, O Lord. Sing it with me. I have heard thy voice. And it told thy love to me. And I long to rise in your arms of love. And be drawn closer to thee. Sing it now. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. I love the blood of Jesus. It's his life he shed for me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good. Amen. It's acceptable. Amen. Everybody say it's good. It's, good. it's, acceptable. it's acceptable. It's perfect. It's perfect. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. God loves you. Yes. He wants you to follow Him all the days of your life. You're called to do that from this day forward. Make up your mind. I'm going to get closer to the Lord. I'm going to follow Him no matter what. And He's going to lead me in the way everlasting. Thank you, Father. God bless you. God love you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Love one another. Come back and see us.